Hello, my name is Mark Foodie, and my presentation is called Exploiting Voice Cloning and Adversarial Simulation. I'd first like to thank Adversary Village for giving me the opportunity to present my research at DEF CON 32, and it's an honor to be here among so many talented individuals. Okay, so let's dive in. Who am I? As I mentioned, my name is Mark. Um, I wear many hats. I'm an offensive security researcher, a father, a husband, a proud cat dad. In addition to my work in AI and in, in, in security, I founded Neurodiverse Hackers, which is a community dedicated to highlighting and addressing the unique needs of neurodiverse individuals in the hacking community. Now let's get to the heart of today's presentation. We're going to explore the fascinating and unsettling world of voice cloning. So initially I had planned on doing, demonstrating how easily voice verification systems could be bypassed, but due to the legal gray areas concerning using a real-time voice clone to access my own bank account. I decided to address focus on showing how cloned speech can be made into undetectable by ant to anti-spoofing mechanisms. While many commercial products can create realistic voice clones, they cannot defeat the voice verification services used by financial institutions, which detect anomalies through mouse spectrograms. To bypass anti-spoofing components, it's crucial to refine a voice model through the steps I'll present. So, so voice verification services are provi provided by companies like Nuance, Variant, Fortress Identity. They're used by financial institutions such as Fidelity Bank, Wells Fargo, Citibank for secure authentication. Although these services enhance security through voice biometrics, they remain vulnerable to exploitation. Today I'll discuss the, math discuss the methods used to bypass these technologies and focus on adversarial training required to enable a voice clone model to bypass anti-spoofing verification systems. The purpose of this talk is not to delve into the voice cloning process itself, but to explore how advers adversarial training can create a voice clone indistinguishable from natural human speech. So I'll walk through the eight key elements that can make a synthetic voice practically imperceptible from the real one, from a real one. Okay. The thematically organized the various approaches for defeating voice verification, I developed the acoustic standards for modifying smooth speech. This is like a set of standards focused on key aspects of audio manipulation, making smooth speech indistinguishable for, to voice verification. Each step in acoustics provides a structured approach to bypass the rigorous uh, uh, verification and streamlining the process used by other researchers to, into like accessible st steps that anyone can follow. In implementing these techniques requires like combining signal processing and machine learning algorithms. So after DEF CON, I will provide code examples and slides on GitHub to demonstrate how these adjustments can be made and automated and used to train a voice clone model. Let's delve in. All right, so slide one, acoustic. So in audio spoofing, adjusting silence intervals is crucial for creating speech that convincingly mimics genuine human interaction. Natural communication, indica natural communication includes pauses and starts at the end of speech. These are known as leading and trailing silences, which can carry acoustic signatures like microphone static, breathing sounds, and other ambient noise. These nuances are vital for making speech sound authentic. So the first task in adjusting silence intervals involves replacing the leading and trailing silence with natural silences extracted from genuine recordings. This requires selecting silences that match the context of the spoof speech and ensuring they exhibit natural variability and align with the intended environment. Along with replacing leading and trailing silence, it's also essential to eliminate interword redundant silence. Smooth speech, smooth speech often has a longer synthetic pauses due to its segmented nature of the speech synthesis process. The goal is to reduce these gaps by inserting human-like silences that maintain the rhythm and flow of authentic speech, using advanced algorithms to model natural silence patterns to model the uh, sound patterns. Okay. So. Then spec um, center spectrum boosting. Center spectrum boosting is also a critical uh, technique for enhancing smooth speech but I mean, because it manipulates frequency components to increase perceived authenticity. Human speech has a, like a con energy concentration in the low to mid frequency range, particularly between one and four kilohertz, which is vital for intelligibility and contains the most phonetic information. Boosting these central frequencies um, makes synthetic speech sound more natural and less mechanical and it helps blend in, it helping it blend seamlessly into a real world audio environments. Natural speech's mid-range frequencies contribute to clarity and distinguish human voices from synthetic ones. 
Um, many audio classifiers and voice verification systems detect subtle clues within this range to differentiate genuine from smooth speech. So make, making, center, making center spectrum manipulation essential for overcoming synthetic speech limitations. Digital signal processing techniques amplify critical frequencies um, while suppressing lesser, um, higher frequencies and enhancing the signal's intensity within a targeted range. Um, careful calibration ensures that the amplification maintains authenticity and avoids di distortions. All right. Oh, optimizing echo simulation. Optimizing echo simulation is crucial for making synthetic speech more convincing and realistic. Echoes naturally occur when a speech is recorded, adding depth and context by reflecting off surfaces. These reflections help listeners perceive space and authenticity, often missing in synthetic voice generated by spoofing algorithms. And the genuine recording echoes are subtle clues that aid in interpreting the recording's space, size, and nature, and they vary in amplitude and delay based upon the surface distance and characteristics. To enhance the realism of smooth speech, simulating natural echo patterns involves introducing slight time delay with copies of the original audio with progressively lower amplitudes. This mimics how sound waves will bounce and decay in real-world environments, and it's enhancing the audio's spatial qualities and challenging voice verification systems to detect the absence of natural reflections. All right, so you, upgrade frequency preemphasis. While well, center spectrum boosting um, focus on enhancing the naturalness of synthetic speech by amplifying mid-ranges, frequency preemphasis targets the higher frequency ranges to improve speech quality and reduce noise. Preemphasis involves boosting the amplitude of higher frequencies, typically between 1 and 6 kilohertz, which are less prominent in natural speech but critical for enhancing clarity um, intelligibility. The primary goal of frequency preemphasis is to adjust the frequency profile of synthetic speech so that it aligns more closely with natural human speech. By applying preemphasis filters, we can emphasize higher frequencies to mask synthetic characteristics and maintain a natural spectral balance. This process reduces noise impact and makes the speech sound more realistic and robust. So through, the, the, through careful calibration, uh, preemphasis ensures speech retains its tonal quality without a distortion, making it more challenging for a voice verification system to detect uh, any anomalies. All right, S is spectral noise reduction. Spectral noise reduction is crucial for enhancing spoof speech by remo removing unwanted noise artifacts that rub or reveal its synthetic quality. While natural speech um, includes subtle random background noise, smooth speech often contains distinct machine noise due to the synthesis, synthetic, synthesis limitations. Managing noise in the audio signal improves the perceived authenticity, making it more challenging for a detection system to identify. The goal is to eliminate or minimize machine-generated noise that can serve as a cue for voice verification systems to reject the speech as cloned. To align the noise profile of smooth speech with natural human speech, we use a three-step strategy. First, we use spectral gain filtering, which filters out the noise by analyzing frequency components and removing those below a set threshold. Then, then we use dynamic noise filtering, which uses adaptive algorithms to adjust real, in real time to the audio environment, ensuring that a continuous noise reduction. And finally, through um, context-appropriate additive noise, such as ambient office or outdoor sounds, which is incorporated, it will often use to mask um, synthetic artifacts and create more natural sounding speech. Uh, Tune adversarial speaker regularization. So, tuning adversarial speaker regularization is a sophisticated technique used to make so synthetic sound, uh, s synthetic speech sound as if it was produced by a real speaker, masking any artifacts that could, re could reveal its artificial origins. This is achieved by using ar ad adversarial methods, often with machine learning models, to refine speech signals so that it closely matches the vocal characteristics of a targeted speaker. By employing adversarial techniques, we can adjust the speech signal to align with the natural variability and dynam dynamism of human speech, reducing the likelihood for it being flagged as synthetic. So to enhance speech authenticity, we, our strategy involves three steps. First, we use adversarial training uh, with the generative adversarial networks to iteratively refine audio quality, allowing the generator to produce realistic samples while the discriminator evaluates their authenticity. 
Second, we engrave the unique voice print of the target speaker onto the spoof audio by adjusting it, um, prosody, pitch, and timbre, and which will match the um, genuine speaker's vocal, which which matches the genuine speaker's vocal characteristics. Finally, regularization techniques smooth irregularities and speech signal ensuring consistent tone and clarity through the audio. All right, I, in, integrate additive noise. Integrating additive noise is crucial for enhancing authenticity of smooth speech. Natural speech often includes background noises, added depth and context, while smooth speech typically sounds too clean and artificial. By strategically adding noise, synthetic speech can blend seamlessly into real world environments, increasing its believability. Additive noise makes synthetic qualities by introducing natural variations and imperfections present in real recordings. It also helps disguise any artifacts or inconsistencies from the, synth from the synthesis process, making smooth speech sound more realistic. To create a realistic audio environment, we follow, uh, we, we can do three steps to do that. First, we select noises, sources that are contextually appropriate, and such as typing sounds for an office setting, or wind or traffic noise. Second, we use algorithms to dynamically adjust the level and type of the noise that we're using, ensuring that it complements the speech without overwhelming it. Finally, we maintain tempo and spatial consistency by aligning the noise with the speech's rhythm and flow, carefully timing its introduction and adjusting spatial characteristics to match the perceived environment. And C, we create model agnostic approach. Creating a model agnostic approach is essential for enhancing spoof speech. Ensuring that te the techniques that use to generate or modify speech are not tied to any specific voice verification system or machine learning model. This approach provides flexibility and adaptability, allowing for the development of spoof methods um, that can effectively bypass a wide range of detection systems, regardless of the underlying algorithms or um, architecture. By focusing on techniques um, that are universally applicable, a model agnostic strategy exploits general weaknesses in speech processing to create a more convincing spoofed audio, um, which was cru is crucial as voice verification systems continue to evolve. To enhance audio manipulation, um, we develop generalizable techniques that address common variable vulnerabilities across systems. And we focus on manipulating silence intervals, frequency emphasis, and noise integration based on uh, fundamental speech processing principles. Uh, then second, we create a flexible framework that allows easy adaptability and testing on various techniques using modular design principles for component and ad algorithm inter intercompatibility. Finally, we implement machine learning models that form, that learn from diverse verification systems, training on generalized features and patterns to ensure adaptability and effectiveness across different platforms. All right. As we conclude our exploration of acoustic standards, it's evident that each element is crucial in refining the authenticity of spoof speech. These techniques provide insight into the weaknesses that can be exploited in voice verification systems and highlight the areas where these systems need to evolve. For cybersecurity professionals, understanding these enhancements lays, lays the foundation for developing more robust defenses against audio spoofing. By dissecting the methods used to create convincing spoof speech, cybersecurity experts gain a deeper understanding of the intricacies of audio manipulation. This knowledge enables them to anticipate and counteract emerging threats, strengthening the security posture of voice verification systems. The acoustic standards offer a comprehensive framework for enhancing the realism of spoof speech. By implying these insights, <clears throat> professionals can devise innovative strategies to detect and thwart sophisticated spoofing attempts and build more, more resilient systems that withstand these challenges. As, a, as we continue to innovate in this field, it's essential to prioritize security, ethics, and responsibility in the development and application of these technologies. Thank you for your attention, and if you're getting, I welcome any questions or discussions you may have. Any questions? Sorry, 
Um, I mean, I think the goal is a uh, text to speech, uh, especially from an adversary's perspective. It's to like get a clone replica of someone's speech and to be able to bypass like sort of any verification systems that would prevent access to like banking records or what have you. I think both in the sense that, which I think what you're saying is like, do we, or is the goal text to speech or is it um, sort of mining um, speech samples from an actual speaker, right? You, you, you have to mine speech samples from a speaker. Like, so you have to start with, a, you know, your clone model and then adding it in like samples from um, your target, you know, the, the degree to, that you, the amount of samples you need to um, and like um, introduce varies depending on the context, but you, you, have, you have to start that way, you know, but implementing these like techniques like will allow you to sort of like expand that you know, so taking a little bit of sample from a target and being able to create like a realistic voice clone is possible using these techniques. So does that answer your question? I think it's a temporary thing. I think it's a temporary thing. Yep. Any other questions? Please. Hi. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there. It, it, the question was like, there are AI models that are in the works to to create spoof speech, but are they um, models also being used to defeat voice um, cloning? And absolutely. I mean, that's sort of the. Um, it's sort of a cat and mouse game in the sense that, in fact, the models that are um, exist to detect spoof speech are probably better in some sense than the models that make clone speech. Like as I was saying. Um, the clones, like, you know, when you look on the internet, there's people selling, you know, voice clone technology. None of that stuff that, like, it, it, like, is advertised or is expected to defeat, like, the voice biometrics that are necessary, like, for, a, like, a career criminal or a cyber threat, you know? So the technology is on that side. But these, these steps that are, like, you know, um, that I've outlined are ways that, like, focus and attack the ways that those AI speech models, like, view um, spoof speech and, it, and determine it and sort of distinguish it from real speech. So we're going after the same places that um, these models were looking at, such as like ambient noise and like, you know, um, echo and uh, pre-emphasis and spectral boosting. By, uh, by addressing those, we make spoof speech much harder um, to detect from real speech. You know what I mean? Is that, okay. Any other questions? What's up? Yeah, 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 please, please. Okay, just speak to me and I'll, I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've heard from a lot of CEOs that are like, I want you to put AI on it. It needs to be AI. Put AI on my company. And voice is obviously one of the options. So given where the technology is now, is that a bad recommendation? Do you think that we shouldn't be using voice cloning? Is it a... Is it, voice or voice verification? Uh, yeah, voice verific is voice verification a failed technology looking for a problem? Yeah, I, well, I would... I'm a little biased, but I would say so. I mean, I would, you know, my own bank uses voice verification. I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm not a CEO of a company, but I would, I, voice verification is, I mean, so like, using these techniques I talked about, well, you have almost like a 95% like effective rate, right? So, I mean, the voice verification systems will advance, but at the current state they're at now, um, they are able to be defeated. It, it, it's, it just requires a uh, voice clone model that has been trained appropriately to defeat them, right? And that is something that any adversary could figure out, could do, right? I mean, with the re with enough resources, um, I mean, I can do it. So if they can do it. So yeah, I mean, if I was a CEO, I would find other ways to like, you know, like to secure myself in voice because I mean, we've already seen in the news other, um, like a bunch of different situations where this has happened. You know, um, and it'll, yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else, please? Anywhere? Anywhere? Are you scared? Okay. It's going on GitHub. I'll have the code. I didn't, I was going to put the code up, but then I thought, you know, I hate it when people just like throw code and then like, I'll have more like 
the code and more like explanations of how to implement each of these techniques, like each of these standards. Um, but that was, uh, this was a talk that was like, could have been a workshop and I just had to pare it down. So there's a lot of cutting, like a lot of cutting. Um, so I, but I promised to release that. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? What's up? It's all right. No, please do. Come on. Yep. Do the generated voices and the voices based out of human, or is it just the address to have a bucket list check? It's a great question. Do you sound like, oh, I'm in a bar, I need to check my mouth? Yeah, it's a great question. So that's an awesome question. The question is, is, um, is like a clone speech indistinguishable to the verification system or to a human listener? So that's a really great question. So like, I would say this, like if someone clones my voice, and calls my wife. She's probably gonna figure out it's not me because not just my voice, but just sort of the speaking patterns might not be the same. It just might like just feel not right. And and in there's situations like um, some some woman had like somebody had done the same thing with their daughter, and they were like it didn't sound right, but they it sounded like her, but not like her. So it depends who we're talking about. Like uh, like this person works at the bank who relies on the voice verification system to say yeah, this sounds authentic. Um, that's probably going to be able to be bypassed. My wife, I mean, gosh, I hope not. You know I mean? Like, it's like, you know, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I, uh, so when I call my bank, I call it, uh, like, I try to like, I just try to, you know, and it's like to try to, you know, voice changes, like, you know, your like your voice can change. So it's really like, it's a, it's not like a fingerprint that it's like, it's harder to modify. I mean, you, people's voice changes with age. So yeah, does that make sense? You, you, yeah, yeah, yes and no. The, the context depends, but yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, for your test units, what are like pretty good uh, to test against them creating a competition? Yeah, so there, there's, um, that's a great question. So there is like open source data sets out there that are used by voice verification systems to sort of refine, train their models on. And they're available, like, um, you know, there, there's um, ASV spoof data sets. Um, there's other ones out there. And you can use them, and just like the ver voice verification companies use them, adversaries can use them also to sort of train on, um, is that, so that, you know, that's what, is that your question? Like, and, and so, if I was gonna train, well, so I would start off by, um, well, I did, I mean, I trained, I start off by a generalized voice data set. Like there's one, um, it's like Linda Johnson, Linda Johnson's speech. It's like 30,000 um, voice samples. And I'd feed that into like my model, right? To start off with and, um, and let it train on that. It took about a week um, on my own system. And then, and then what I did was I take voice samples of myself, like which are like maybe a hundred, right? Which are similar to what you could get, let's say, on this YouTube video, if someone was to cut my voice into segments, right? And I train it on that, um, and it, it gets pretty close, but it's not gonna defeat verification unless I address ambient noise. I mean, because the way voice verification works is it, it takes the digital, it takes the digital signal and trans, transfers it into like a MEL spectrogram. So it's looking at it like in a much different way than we are, and it's looking at for uh, different, like differences in frequency and like pitch, and it's, it knows which things are um, common with spoof speech. And so it picks it up. So as long as you can like manipulate um, the synthetic speech in, in order to sort of bypass those, um, those like, you know, um, target areas, then yeah, it's, uh, I mean, and it's doable. I mean, uh, you know, other people have done it. I mean, APTs can do it, I'm sure. You know I mean? Uh, like our government can do it, you know, I mean. What's that? I mean, in a sense, that's what, um, what's that? Okay, I, I'm being told I have to answer this offline. Yes, that's, we, the, 
Yeah, I guess I'm, we're done for talk. But um, do we test it against? Um, sorry. Um, can I answer that afterwards? Because I'm being told we got to stop, and it's like it's a little more deeper question. It's a little more complicated to explain. But yes, I, it, the short answer is yes. Okay, uh, we'll just come see me, and we'll talk. One, I, I'll talk. It, I'll be here afterwards. So I'm not going anywhere. So anybody's got questions, want to hang out, chat, talk. I'm cool with it. Ivan, right, thank you for coming to my talk, man. Mm -hmm.